This is nasi lemak, a favorite dish here in Singapore and Malaysia. But look at how aesthetic this version is with the pretty specks of blue. And this is all natural, okay? And nasi lemak is always served with a delicious, spicy, sweet sambal. And I'm going to be showing you the best recipe for it right here. So let's do this. First, let's make the easy nasi lemak in a rice cooker. You're going to need some jasmine white rice. You can also use basmati rice too. Give the jasmine rice a good rinse until the water is not cloudy. I'm just using the same rice cooker pot, okay? To the rice, add coconut cream first. And then add water. The general ratio for rice to water in a rice cooker is 1 is to 1. But if your rice cooker pot has an indicator line on the inner pot, you want to fill the water until it reaches that line instead. Next, some salt to taste. And then I'm adding ginger. This is ginger paste but you can just place big chunks of ginger instead in random spots in the rice. Give all of that a good stir to incorporate and next these are pandan leaves or screw pine leaves. You want to knot the pandan leaves so that it bruises it and these add such a lovely aroma to the rice. Nestle this in with the rice as well. And then place that pot into the rice cooker and then just cook. Easy. This cooks at the regular rice setting so there's no need to adjust anything at all. Now, while your rice is cooking, let's make the pretty blue coloring. These are dried butterfly blue pea flowers. Give the flowers a quick rinse and then steep them in some hot water. Five minutes or so later and ta-da, you have this natural blue food coloring. Run it through a strainer to get rid of all the flowers and your easy peasy all natural blue food coloring is all done. When you come back to your rice cooker and you hear it beep or whatever sound it makes when the rice is cooked, the nasi loma is all done. Remove the pandan leaves and ginger chunks if that is what you used and give the nasi loma a fluffing. You might see these chunks of coconut milk. This is completely normal. Just fluff the rice and it should disappear into the rice. Grab the blue pea flower food coloring and with a spoon, simply drizzle it all over the rice. And then with your rice paddle, simply flip the rice over and continue to drizzle more on the other side. You don't have to stir the rice at all. In fact, try not to over stir it. You really just have to flip the rice over and drizzle on more blue food coloring. And your super pretty butterfly blue pea nasi lemak is all done. Next, nasi lemak is always served with crunchy ikan bilis and kacang goreng or fried dried anchovies and peanuts. These are very easy to make. To the pan, add some oil and you want to let it get hot over medium heat. Once hot, we are adding some raw peanuts to the oil and let that fry up. These are raw peanuts so you might want to wash these first and try to dry as much as possible or else you will get oil splatters. Once the peanuts turn golden and you hear some fun crackling sounds from the peanuts, this shouldn't take long by the way, just some 5 minutes or so, add the ikan bilis or dried anchovies next. Same thing with the ikan bilis, you want to wash the dried anchovies first and dry it as much as possible before frying it. Then simply stir fry the ikan bilis with the peanuts until the anchovies are golden brown and crispy and not chewy in the middle. Again, this should be just another quick couple of minutes and take them off the oil. Super easy and just nothing to it. Now you want to save some of the dried anchovies by the way for this next portion which is the ultra important component of good nasi loma, the sambal. I promise you this is the best sambal for nasi loma and this is the only recipe you need, okay? So first, these are dried chilies. If you've been on this channel for long, you know how this goes. You want to give the dried chilies a rinse under water and then add hot boiling water to it. Allow the dried chilies to rehydrate. 
About 10 minutes or so, your dried chilies should be nicely rehydrated. Simply drain the water and cut the dried chilies to smaller pieces for easier blending. Use a pair of scissors because you do not want to be touching this at all. They're hot, okay, and spicy. And our dried chilies are done. This is optional and I actually rarely do this, but I am dry toasting the belacan or fermented dried shrimp paste. It usually comes in blocks, so you just want to break off a chunk of the belacan. Place the belacan in a dry pan and heat over low to medium heat. Belacan is damp at its raw form and you know it's nicely toasted once it gets kind of dry and crumbly on the surface. It will also break easily and it should turn a slightly darker shade. And that's how you know your belacan is toasted and ready to go. Alright, now we're just going to be blending all of the ingredients for our sambal. First, the dried chilies that we prepared earlier. You can also use dried chilli paste by the way if you have that on hand. Next, onions or you can use shallots as well. Some cloves of garlic, standard. Ginger. This is lemongrass, you just want the inner core of it. And the toasted belacan. Next, now you remember the dried anchovies that we made earlier. You want to take about 2 tablespoons of the fried dried anchovies and toss it into the blender. This is the one unique ingredient in nasi lemak sambal. Finally, while I usually add water to a blender to blend things up easier, but for sambal, I use oil. And give all of that a blend and you should get something like this. To a pan, add just a little bit of oil and you just want enough to get hot oil going and then over low to medium heat, add the blended sambal paste. Continuously stir fry the sambal. This is a huge amount so it will take a while to fully cook. You don't need this much sambal at one sitting but you're going to be doing all the hard work of blending a bunch of stuff anyway so why not make extra, stick in the fridge so that the next time you have plenty of sambal are ready to go. Anyway, you want to stir fry the sambal until it has dried down and emulsified. It will also turn a darker, deeper shade and the oil is floating above the sambal. This is called pecah minyak or the oil splitting process and this is how you know your sambal is fully cooked. When you've reached this stage, add tamarind paste. I diluted the tamarind paste in some water just so it's a liquid form and is able to stir in easier with the sambal. Next, sugar. Nasi lemak sambal is sweet, so we are going to have to add quite a bit of sugar. I'm using some coconut palm sugar but you can simply use brown sugar or even just regular white sugar. Give your sambal a taste test and then add salt. Belachan already has salt in it so it's always good to taste it first before adding salt because you do not want to add too much salt and then it just becomes a salty sambal. Give your sambal another taste test and if it tastes delicious, our sambal is ready. Yay! Finally, let's assemble our super easy pretty nasi lemak. Arrange the nasi lemak in a big plate. Just plop it prettily in the middle just like this and then add the crispy crunchy fried anchovies and peanuts. Some refreshing cucumbers. And I love to serve this with some Malay style fried chicken or ayam goreng and a fried egg. And of course, you have to have some of that gorgeous sambal that we just made. And our nasi lemak is ready. Give this pretty plate of nasi lemak a go and bye. Now I know you want to check out that crispy ayam goreng or Malay spiced fried chicken next. So you want to click on that right now.